This is the Star Wars Book of Masks from 1983, published by Random House, and it includes nine easy-to-punch-out masks that you were supposed to just, you know, use for your kids' uh, playtime or Halloween or whatever. I haven't really seen that many of these books around for whatever reason. It was just a kind of one-off thing that they put out uh, in the wake of Return of the Jedi, so I guess that's part of it. But also the fact that these are punch-out masks means that if you were to actually use it, that the book itself is kind of destroyed, so maybe a fair number of these books probably just got thrown away eventually. In any case, it's a really cool item. I made a short video about it a while back, but I think it's worth looking at it uh, again. As you can see, um, it's got some pretty cool artwork for each of these masks. Uh, the artwork is by Walter Velez, who is uh, quite a talented artist who passed away a few years ago. It gives you some instructions here about how to use the masks. Basically, you're supposed to punch them out along the perforated lines here. So these are all perforated onto a bit thicker paper, you know, kind of like cardstock than you would normally find in a in a normal book. Uh, it says, with the point of a pencil, <laughs> point of a pencil, poke, boy, with the point of a pencil, punch out the eye holes of the mask. Punch out around the nose on the perforated lines and punch out the holes at either end of the mask. Wow, that was a little harder to read than I expected, but yeah, there are these eye holes, uh, a couple of small holes that you're supposed to attach a um, string or a rubber band or something to so you can actually wear it as a mask, and then there's a nose perforation here that allows the nose to kind of come up as a flap so your kid's nose can poke out a little bit into the mask and it'll be a little easier to wear, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. You just do that and wear it and kids can have fun pretending to be Princess Leia or Chewbacca. I think these this artwork is really cool, especially because it's a one-off kind of thing. I don't think they ever use this again for anything. Well, almost nothing, as we'll talk about in a second. Uh, C-3PO, Wicket the Ewok, looking really cute. The other side is just blank, as you can see, although it does have a uh, Lucasfilm copyright thing there. In the center of the book we have some accessories, I guess you'd say. Darth Vader chest control panel, which I suppose you would tape to your kid's chest if they're playing Darth Vader. Rebel General's badge. The uh, very Star Wars-y calculator watch. And then just <laughs> random like shapes with the names of characters on them, which is very interesting. Gamorrean Guard. I mean, it does look like the center part of their armor, kind of, but I don't know. And I don't think Chewbacca ever wore a circle that said Wookiee on it, but correct me if I'm wrong. So we've got Darth Vader's mask here, Yoda, Gamorrean Guard, Bib Fortuna, and then uh, Admiral Akbar there. So, yeah, pretty cool book, a uh, nice vintage item. One thing I didn't know, though, when I first got this a while back, is that they actually made a Japanese version of this book, and it is very interesting for several reasons that we're going to talk about today. First of all, it took me quite some time to track down the Japanese version of this book. For whatever reason, it's just not very commonly available, and uh, I had to search sort of auction sites and things like that uh, for quite a while. I did find some previously ended auctions that were taunting me from a few years ago, but I couldn't find the actual book itself until relatively recently when I did find a listing for it on Yahoo Auctions Japan. Now, in order to actually buy something from Yahoo Auctions Japan from the U.S., you have to use a go-between service. I used buyee.com, which is fine, I guess. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I'm not really recommending it per se, because... You do have to be kind of careful with it, and they uh, it can be expensive. But in this case, it worked out just fine. And I was able to get my hands on the Japanese version of this book. And one thing you may notice right away is that it's got Jabba prominently featured here on the cover. And you may be thinking to yourself, hang on a minute. I don't remember Jabba being in the, <laughs> this previous book. It's not one of the nine uh, easy-to-punch-out masks. And you would be right... This is a new character that is not included in the original book. 
And in fact, it's not just Java as well. There's some other things and some other interesting differences that I want to look through uh, right now. So I suppose the first difference you'd notice is that the Japanese version is way thicker than the American one for whatever reason. Uh, I do think it uses thicker cardstock for the pages, so that's part of it. But the other thing is just that there are more masks included. So that is very interesting. Let's go ahead and look at, look through this real quick. Uh, I guess we'll look at the cover first of all. It says Star Wars Masks, and then Uchu Kaijin is kind of like space monsters. Got Dai uh, you know, a, a big <laughs> assemblance, assemblage of space monsters, or space monsters are all coming together, that kind of uh, vibe. It says direct from America. Um, I can't see through the, the camera very well here, but it says, uh, space monster, oh yeah, let's all put on space monster masks and play together, as as one does. On the back here, it has sort of a sample of the Yoda mask, and basically says the same thing again. But interesting um, that they decided to go with Jabba as the cover, and that, you know, to be honest with you, is the thing that really attracted me to this in the first place, because, as I say, Jabba not on here for some reason or other. So let's go ahead and open this up. Now this is like uh, many Japanese books. It has a dust cover on it that you can take off inside. It's just, you know, basically the same thing. But the desk, dust cover itself does have kind of a little, um, oh, very, very brief <laughs> description of uh, Return of the Jedi you know, it's it's just sort of, you know, background information, I suppose you'd say, about the Empire and whatnot. Uh, and then it has some instructions about how to use your masks. And that's where another difference comes out. These are not actually perforated in any way. They're just printed here on the cardstock. And in order to actually use them as masks, you would have to, well, and according, according to the instructions, it says here, use scissors and a knife to cut out the uh, shapes of the masks cleanly. Then you're supposed to uh, poke a little hole, I guess, where you're going to put uh, a rubber band, and then uh, you can actually wear it. But it's interesting that they <laughs> they actually say to use scissors and a knife. Uh, and they don't even say, like, get your parents to help or anything like that. But hopefully kids who are of age, you know, of the age that would be interested in these kind of masks are not going to be using knives on their own. Who knows? Now, if we look here on the back of the Yoda mask, or any of the masks, indeed, we'll see that they have a picture from the movie, the character name, as well as a blurb about that character. So, you know, it's saying that uh, he's a 900-year-old hermit who lives on the uh, planet Dagobah, etc., etc. Very cool that they added that extra detail, which is not found in the American one. I really appreciate that, especially, you know... I suppose the kids and parents who are uh, going to be using this might not be quite as familiar with all of the characters as American ones might be. We have here, of course, Admiral Akbar, make more in guard, Jabba the Hutt himself, very cool. And in fact, if we want to look at Jabba's description here, it says. Um, Let's see, he is a underworld gangster, or, you know, king of the underworld. He lives on a palace on Tatooine, and he's like a cross between a slug and a toad. Which, you know, seems pretty accurate to me. He's got big eyes, a long tail, and moves around a lot. Well, his, I'm sorry, his tail moves around a lot. Uh, he's so big that he can't move very fast. But if you if he stares at you with his uh, crazy red eyes, no one can help but be intimidated. Essentially, that was uh, a little quick off the off the top of my head in translation there. Um, Bib Fortuna. Now you know this this artwork I really appreciate. I really like this art, and I just can't understand why they didn't include it in the American version of this book. When we get to Chewbacca, there's one thing that's pretty interesting that you may notice. Or maybe not. <laughs> and that is that uh, this is actually completely different artwork than they used in the American version. So let's compare them here. 
Let's see if I can find Chewbacca. There he is. So if we look at uh, look at them here, I mean the, the the vibe is similar, but you can see they're totally different pieces of artwork. And the one on the left, if I'm honest, is probably a little bit more of a a rough looking one, a little bit less refined seeming. So I'm wondering if maybe this is not some earlier version of the Chewbacca painting that they used. Not sure. Here's uh, Wicket. And amazingly, they've included everyone's favorite uh, Toothface, otherwise known as Jaquiel. I have no idea why they decided to go with that, but uh, I'm not going to complain. We have uh, C-3PO, of course. I think the other ones, let's see with C-3PO just real quick to compare. look about the same. The colors are different, but I think probably that can be chalked up to the, well, different, you know, printing technologies and or the way these uh, books have aged over the years. There's uh, Darth Vader, of course. Now, if we look here at Princess Leia, you're going to find another difference. Let's compare this version of Leia with that one. Totally different. I'm not sure, again, I'm not entirely sure uh, if they reworked the one on the left to eventually get to the one on the right, or if it's just a totally different painting, but they're very, very different. This one on the right that was in the American version is way better. <laughs> Honestly, looks a lot more like Carrie Fisher. And let's see, we have also a new one, Nine Nub, was not in the American version of the book. And neither was Salacious Crumb. Yes, a Salacious Crumb mask. Very, very interesting. Let's see what they say about him. So, yeah, he's a small alien, lives in, lives in Jabba's palace. He has a large beak and yellow eyes and a tufted, uh, a couple of tufted ears like uh, bat wings. Interesting. And finally, we have the Imperial Stormtroopers here, which uses a completely different kind of trooper, the Biker Scout. And let's see here. This one also does not have a Stormtrooper in it, right? Just to double check here. Nope. I will say too, you know, with this, this artwork, it does seem a little bit less refined than the one that ended up in the, um, the Jeff or the American book, rather. I wonder with these extra masks, like this one too, uh, Salacious Crumb. Again, seems a little bit more like a rough painting. And maybe my my theory here is that the ones that they included that are not included in the American version are kind of like rough ones that maybe Lucasfilm uh, didn't approve or for whatever reason they decided not to include, but they did include in the Japanese version of the book. Anyway, very cool. Uh, you can see here, uh, it goes up to mask 14, whereas this one only includes nine. So we've got five extra masks in the Japanese version. Just thought this would be kind of cool to show you. Uh, not something probably that a lot of people in the US or even in Japan, to be honest with you, have seen before. Have you ever seen either of these books? I'd be interested to know if you have or what you think about them in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. Right about here is where I would normally tell you about my Patreon and how you can support the channel, but I've decided to stop using Patreon, mostly just because I have found that I'm making uh, videos less frequently and I just felt bad taking money from people if I wasn't giving them that much in the way of content in return. I'm not quitting YouTube or anything, but you may find that the frequency of uploads is a little bit less than it had been in the past. I would like to take this opportunity, though, to give my heartfelt thanks to each and every person who supported me through Patreon for the past several years. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you'll keep watching.